How's it going guys? Hunter here with AM Electronics. I've got my CD7 shirt on, so you know what that means. We've got an update for dash design, so let's jump right in. This latest update, version 2.2, gives us a host of new features in dash design. The first of which is the ability to choose how many screens you have. So if you only want to see two or three screens, you can hide additional screens in your design so you don't have to toggle through everything to get to the next one you want to see. Another great feature is the ability to transmit or output CAN messages. This includes the GPS channels in the GPS enabled dashes. Another feature that I'm most excited about is the ability to check for updates within the software. You don't need to check what version you're on, go to the website, see and compare your version to the latest, automatically in the software, check for updates. We've also added some additional functionality to some of the design elements as well, including the square bar and the bar graph. And finally, we're happy to announce that we now support the 2020 Can-Am Maverick X3 with our plug and play adapter cable. This adds from 16 to 19 additional channels, depending on which 2020 model you have, all via Can to the CD7 or CD5 display. To download version 2.2, you're going to need to go to the AM Electronics website. But after you download version 2.2 from the website, you shouldn't need to go back to download any updates. A new feature added to 2.2 is the ability to check for updates within the software itself. Simply by going up to help and then check for updates, the software will ping our server, see if there's a later version available. This is great because if something's not working like it should, or if you heard about a feature that your buddy has, you can go ahead check for an update, and then have the latest features right away. While the dash is super configurable and the ability to have four main screens is great, not everybody needs four main screens. Some people just need one, some people just want two or three. We've added the functionality in the dash design software to hide screens three and four if you don't want those to show up. And that's done simply with a checkbox in the software. Here on the right hand side, there's a box for enabled. So that will either enable or disable the screen from showing up on your dash when you load it to the software. You'll see here on the screens tab that the screens that are not enabled, they're grayed out. So you know those won't show up when you load your design to the dash itself. We've got a ton of requests for this next one. Dash Design 2.2 now supports the ability to send CAN messages from your dash to other devices. What this means is you have the ability to output custom CAN messages from your dash to another device. Those could be completely new, unique messages, or those messages could be commands to trigger another device to do something. This also allows us to request CAN messages from devices. What this means is you now have the ability to query another device to send a packet of data. You can have this query set up based on a time parameter or when another message is received. A lot of CAN messaging out there works on a request receive basis, where packets of data are requested. Once that packet's received, it requests the next one. Having that functionality configurable in here opens up a wormhole of possibilities. The great part about the CAN transmit is for users that have a GPS enabled dash. If the GPS antenna is going straight to the dash, you can now output those channels to another device. Like say your Infinity ECU. Then you could use that GPS data that the dash is outputting for vehicle speed in your ECU for something like uh, gear calculation or boost by speed. The CAN transmit is also user configurable based on alarms and other conditions and channels within the dash. Possibilities are endless. Whether you're sending information to a third-party PDU, an AEM PDU, a different CAN keypad, or even a different ECU. As I touched on before, we've also made some improvements to some graphic elements on the dash. So let's take a look at those. I'll use this on change screen as an example. Give me some blank open workspace just to pop some of these on screen. The first of which is the fixed shape gauge. This is a great design element that can be used when you're making a custom layout depending on what sort of art features you want to add to the display. And we've added the ability to create a gradient on this shape so then you could fill the shape and have a cool look to it. Simply aesthetics. In this you could change it from a rectangle to an ellipse depending on what sort of design you're going for. You can change the line, the fill, and then we can also add a gradient to it with this checkbox right here. So we'll add the gradient in and you can have it fade from white to black or any other color out there. This is a great element to use to spice up your layouts and enhance your designs on the dash. Another improvement that's been made is to the vertical and horizontal bar graphs. You have the ability to square them off now. So you could remove the chamfer 
on the leading edge of the bar graph, get square mode. You also have one of my favorite new features is the ability to fill from the center. This is great for any sort of channel that dips from negative to positive, like say your lap time or something like the G's, negative G's, positive G's. You can start at the center and go negative to positive. So a good example of this, where this could be used, is in your lap time. So we could input square mode, fill from the center. We'll have the start set from negative 10 and then the end at positive 10. We'll also uh, remove these bars, give it a little bit of a cleaner look. Check this out. Preview value negative five dips down to the left. Preview value of five, the bar fills to the right. This gives you a great sort of slider to use for your lap timing, or even for your positive and negative Gs if you're using the vehicle dynamics module, gives you a great visual on what's happening at a given time on track. Something cool that maybe not a lot of people use, but for those that do, they'll really enjoy it, is the ability that when creating a channel that's only displaying a min or max value, we can change the reset source. Previously, you had to use the reset button on the dash or wire in a remote reset button to the back of the dash. Now, we can change that source to be based on another channel. So it could be a separate input, either going to one of our modules or any other channel on the dash itself. You can also create an alarm channel based on a number of conditions that will trigger to reset these input filters as well. On top of these new features, we've also gone through and fixed some bugs, like in the simulator. Previously, some MoTeX stuff wasn't working. Now that's all good to go. We've also made some updates to the simulator where previously channels would be deleted by pressing backspace. That's also been addressed and fixed and a couple other small things. You can read about all of those in the update notes at the link below. That wraps it up guys for Dash Design version 2.2. Please leave us a comment below. Let us know what you wanna see in a future update or what added functionality you want to any of our products. The comments help, we read them, we respond, and we take that feedback seriously and implement that like you saw here. Some of these features I requested, some of these features were requested by end users, some of the features were requested by our engineers. Be sure to like the video, leave us a comment, subscribe to the channel, and turn the bell on so you see when the next video drops.